Okay, Ontario, Canada. How's the weather over there? Uh, Halifax, okay. Toronto, okay, right there. Uh, Bello, all right. Okay, uh, Nebraska, hmm, that's that nice. Atlanta, yay, off to my Atlanta people. All right. Um, okay, New Brunswick, oh, wow, that's way out there. All right, welcome, Ify. All right, so glad to have all of you here. Okay, so let me, um, uh, Northampton, UK, all the way from UK, Bonley, thank you for joining. We're glad to have you here. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, let's get uh, started. Uh, okay. Okay, just um, so can we keep it coming? I think uh, we're more than 15 people right now. Uh, okay, we're 20 now because we're actually we're expecting about 87 of you, <laughs> so we're barely we're barely half of it yet. <laughs> so, uh, so excited! I want to meet all these 87 people that want to be super project managers. So, really glad to have you guys here. All right. Okay, uh, someone has joined. Uh, please help me reach out to any of your friends that you may have um, or may have been invited for this, but they're not here yet, so that they don't miss out. We only have about an hour for this session today. Oh, Winnipeg. Oh, wow. Man, you guys out of your busy schedule, you're all here. So happy to have you guys. We appreciate your time. All right. I'm going to share my screen right now. All right. I hope you guys can see my screen. Just let me know if you can see it. Yes, we can. All right. So, um, like I said, welcome again. Uh, this is our 2024 masterclass. I, I know we've made a whole lot of noise about it, and I'm hoping that we're not going to disappoint you at all. Uh, and this will be what your time. Um, uh, uh, the, the, our invitation to everybody is really to uh, kind of level up their skills. Uh, it doesn't matter what your background is or where you're coming from, but uh, this provides an opportunity for you to actually gain some skills that can help set you apart in whatever uh, industry you are, but you, you know you have the opportunity of doing project management. So this is the first day of two. Uh, we're going to have this again uh, tomorrow and uh, to go over, uh, you know, some key concepts some principles uh, around project management, you know, kind of break it down and make it easy for you to uh, relate with. So my name is Jonathan Ifechuku. I am a project portfolio manager, uh, business transformation and agile scrum coach. I have over 20 years experience. I've been in several industries, actually, uh, from from um, uh, internet service provider company to a technology company, uh, consulting firms, run a business, run a business for some time, uh, went back into technology consulting again, then find myself in the United States, and I'm still doing what I love. So that's the brief <laughs> about me. All right. So I'm gonna be your coach, uh, you know, for this uh, masterclass today. And um, as we get along, you get to know me a little bit more. Okay, so first thing we want to do is to have this, I call it the experience poll. Well, we want to understand where you are, or where you are in your journey. Uh, where do you see yourself, you know, in terms of your experience and so forth. So I have a few questions that I'm going to put out here. Uh, please respond in the chat because we want to look at your responses and use it to make some modifications in terms of the content so that it will be more relevant to you know more aligned to your own expectations okay okay first question i have for you guys is what is your level you have what is your level of uh, project management experience you have no project management experience you can type yes or no okay and uh, that's just fine so that's the first question second question is do you consider yourself a beginner? 
So you could say, yeah, I'm a beginner. No, I'm not a beginner. Okay, you can respond that way. That's just absolutely fine. Um, the third question is, do you, are you an intermediate project manager? That's how you see yourself. It's not about how I'm assessing. It's not about where, how do you see yourself? Where do you place yourself in this uh, spectrum? All right. Uh, no experience at all. You're a beginner. You're an intermediate. Um, or you consider yourself very experienced. So can you just respond? You could also use the numbers. All right. So yes to one yeah, or no to one. Uh, yes to two, no to two. Or, you know, you can do it that way. Just make it simple. All right. Um, the other there question is, a, is. There is a pool, too. You can use the pool. OK. So um, so can you send out? Can you put that out yeah. to them so that they can use it? And I think. Some OK, great. So, yeah, you can just vote. Okay. Okay, fine. Um, those who have already dropped there, you could still repeat that on the poll, okay? All right. So are you currently, number five says, are you currently a project manager? Yes or no? Um, so the uh, number six question is, have you previously done a PM training? Yes or no? All right. So let me talk about my a little bit. What matters to me? Um, as some of you, my brothers and sisters from the great continent of Africa, I'm sure you can relate to that plate of food on the right. I love food. So I just love food. And that's one of my special ones. All right. The other thing that matters to me is uh, family. Um, I really value family and a good life. I have um, a son who's nine and a daughter who is four. And a beautiful wife who's been very supportive. Um, you know, um, I just love enjoy having a good life, and, and my part of what I'm doing right is uh, right now is what one of the things that I love doing: mentoring and coaching people, and helping them to become a better uh, version of themselves. So these are the, some of the, you know a few things that matter to me. Uh, so what about you? What really matters to you? So you can type that again into the chat. Tell me what is really those three things that are important to you. Like I've told you, I love food. I really love my family, and I want a good life. All right. So you can drop in what also uh, matters to you. Okay. Right uh, in the chat. So. Um, I know some of us are coming from uh, diverse backgrounds, okay? We, we, we're coming from all kinds of, uh, you know, backgrounds. But I want to just tell you a little bit about myself, uh, you know, in terms of my career journey. Because when we looked at your, when you registered for this master class, um, we were trying to understand where people are in terms of, you know, their career journey uh, or why they want to pivot to being a project manager. But if you look at this screen, you see I've come a long way in terms of, I, I think if I could put a number to it, I probably have done like three or five, four or five different uh, pivoting in terms of my career journey. So at the very beginning, coming out of the university, I was hired as a graphical user interface designer because what I studied in the university was graphics, uh, or what I actually specialized in was graphics uh, design. And so I, I got hired as a user, uh, you know, user experience designer. And then from there, I um, got trained. I got trained uh, on web development, and then I got promoted to become a web developer. From there, I uh, got opportunity to work with one of the big five consulting companies, where I started off as a systems analyst. Now you can see my progress. There's a reason why I'm telling you this story, so that don't think you can't pivot to anything you know as long as you have the drive and the openness and you're willing to learn and put in the work you you could you know basically pivot to most of the any career path you actually want to pursue all right from there i moved on as a business analyst they got promoted to becoming a technology uh um uh, consultant this is actually the period that my you know like i experienced very significant growth in terms of what I know today and some of the things I'm sharing with you. Uh, that window of growth and becoming a subject matter expert, you know, took me like 15 years or more. 
All right, uh, you can see my progression from becoming a technology consultant to managing, moving from technology, I moved into the business as aspect of, uh, of, of consulting instead of just focusing on technology. You can see again, I pivoted from just being a techie guy to a business person. And then from there, I jumped into becoming an entrepreneur. So you can see all these various, uh, you know, pivoting and changing uh, new requirements. It, it was a really a period of gold. That's when I had a lot of the hands-on that I had, certifications, uh, trainings, uh, both at home and overseas, and uh, traveled to a lot of countries uh, because of the opportunity that was provided for me uh, within those, um, uh, you know, the platform of those organizations. And then from there, I moved in to become a business transformation, you know, putting all this experience I had from becoming a technology person, a, 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 you know, um, a management consultant, uh, but having run a, some, a company for a good number of years. And now I'm in a position to be able to actually uh, advise other companies and actually consult for them and help them to uh, actually undertake a change journey, uh, both from uh, employee side of it to, you know, um, uh, to actually process systems, uh, 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 you know, and um, uh, organizational transformation. All right. Now, what? I, now, the interesting thing is that, oh, this is probably the pinnacle. No, 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 not at all. Uh, what I have experienced also as being a business transformation consultant is that I'm beginning to move towards more leadership now. Uh, which is why I have this uh, journey map for you. You can actually do something like this, you know, like this journey map to help you, help you kind of have a, a picture uh, of, you know, what has transpired and where you want to go. So you could, this could actually be futuristic for you as well. All right. So what's your story? That's the question I have for you. What's your story? What's your journey map looking like? You could drop that also. I mean, you could just briefly summarize and say, okay, I actually was doing this. I know some of you responded in your um, in your uh, in your registration. You had to actually responded and said, um, I, I, I'm just getting into some of you are coming from uh, NGO background. Uh, and you're probably concerned that maybe project management is a little bit different in the different industry. Uh, and some of you have never done it at all. You're in a different industry entirely. And so first thing I want to just state right now is the project management is not an industry. It's just a knowledge domain. OK, so what the, the, the challenge or, or rather the uh, the difference is just basically that if you're in construction, for example, there are more requirements that are a little different than if you're in professional services uh, doing project uh, management. OK, Th those are just about it. project management is basically uh, project management. All right. So in terms of your expectation, the question I have for you is, why are you here? Uh, forgive my typo there. Uh, why are you here? That's the question. All right. You showed up here today, despite all your crazy schedule, and you're giving us some of you is like 1 a.m. where you are. All right. Uh, or 2 a.m., uh, but you're still here. There's something you want to get at. So could you just type in why exactly that, uh, wh why you're here? And I have a few questions for you. Uh, for example, what is your current job role or job title? That's one. And a follow-up to that is, are you satisfied with it? So I, I basically want you, as you're here, if you, you know, for us to really be able to help you is to, answer these questions as candidly as you can all right are you satisfied with your current job role or title or maybe you're doing the job but the, the title doesn't align with what you're doing maybe you think you're doing project management but they don't call you a project manager they don't even call you a project coordinator and that's really frustrating so let's talk about it so what are, number two what are your frustrations you can type into the chat i really want to look at it and um, see how we can help you and uh, number three is that if you have taken the PM training before, I'm not talking about training for certification. I'm talking about that you've gone to some project management training before. What is it that you thought that was lacking? And what precisely are you looking for in this particular, uh, you know, session, all right? Or, you know, what exactly are you looking for? How can we exactly help you? Uh, what are your struggles with mastering PM? Uh, there are some areas of the project management practice that is actually frustrating you. You've tried over and over again, you're still not getting it. 
All right. And the last of all is why are you looking to pivot? Why do you think maybe you think that in project management you make all the money? I mean, it could be a valid reason. All right. But we just want to know why you want to pivot. All right. And uh, let me just point out really quick here is that the kind of um, hands on coaching and mentoring and support that we provide is not intended for you to go take the uh, project management certification. This is about helping you to get a job or if you already have the job to keep the job and, and be the, your best doing that job. That's what we do here uh, at Polo uh, Academy. Okay. All right. So um, now well, I also looked at all the responses that all of you guys uh, gave, uh, gave in terms of when you registers. Uh, let's look at a few. Uh, there, I just try to summarize it, uh, and let's see if yours, your expectation, actually resonates with this. All right. Uh, some of you said uh, we want to understand all about project management. Well, I don't think you're going to understand all of the project management in two days. You probably have an idea of it, and uh, then you probably need to come to a formal class. Okay. Uh, so we can help you with that as well. Uh, you want to understand key concepts and principles, right? All right. You want to understand the keys. Of, yes, absolutely. Uh, these are really essential to understanding project management. Okay. Someone said, um, as a business analyst, uh, what's the business analyst view to project management or in terms of uh, what is their role? I, I think that's the way I want to interpret this. But if you think that's not the, um, the right um, analysis of this particular question, uh, maybe you can type into the chat and try to explain it uh, better. But that's what I think uh, you're trying to say here. Uh, and someone else said, um, a few other people said, hands-on project management experience. Definitely, that's what we do here. We try to give you hands-on. This isn't about theory or some academic exercise. We actually want you to be able to get the job or you really have the job and keep that job and do it excellently uh, well. Okay, someone said, uh, a few other people said, key project, I want to understand key project management skills that will help me to stand out. Okay, this is really about, uh, you know, rolling up your sleeves and, you know, and, uh, you know, trying to uh, make yourself the go to person uh, when it comes to project management. All right. Yes, we can also help you with that. Uh, a few other people said, how to use project management tools to manage tax and collaborate with teams. Well, while while we do not teach a particular use of a particular project management tool here however i do have experience with a whole lot of other tools that i can share some of my experience with in one of our previous cohort i actually taught them how to use one of the tools but we usually don't do that because uh, it takes a lot but not because we don't want to do it but it's 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 uh, it takes it's something you have to actually have to schedule another class for because if you want to do justice to it you need to actually you know dedicate time for it but if we have a sufficient demand for whether it's microsoft projects or smartsheet or monday.com of course we would run the class but what we give as a bonus in our cohorts is to actually take one of the tools and explain the basic features and you know just the key things that will help you to get started okay I hope that would help, all right? But in terms of the cohort itself, in terms of the experience you will have, we will teach you how to manage tags and collaborate with your teams. Those are key skills that you need to have uh, to succeed as a PM, all right? Um, then someone said, a few other people who said, professional knowledge of project management. Well, if I understand this question really well, I think um, th this, the the, the the person of the set of people that were asking this question is probably they have been doing it uh, without maybe following the principles and understanding exactly what they're doing. I think that's what this question is. Yes, um, with our training, you will understand the terminologies, you will understand the key elements, you will understand the key principles and concepts, and you can speak the language. But not just that. You'll be able to do the job and actually execute, and 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 with you know like uh, talk intelligently, uh, like someone who actually knows that thing. Okay, that's what we're going to help you to do. Uh, someone, a few other people say, I want to know everything about project management. <laughs> okay, like I said, two days isn't enough for you to know everything about project management, but we can get you started. 
okay we can get you started on that journey and help you along the way uh someone said i want to take baby steps so this sounded like more like a, someone a beginner with project management yes you have come to the right place because what we try to do here is to demystify project nine you know sometimes when we talk about this it's like what the, you know what is this thing they're talking about project management it's not as complicated as you think as you you know as we have our conversations uh, today all right uh someone said uh, another set of people said i want to understand the difference between project uh, the different project management methodologies okay now this is another big area but what we uh what, what in my experience what i have discovered that the hybrid approach is always works for most projects okay except where the um the companies that uh, you know pure technology company now that they develop software they're always rolling up software and stuff like that and then you probably will say oh stay with chrome but i mean uh, scrum yes correct uh but uh, for most other projects, a hybrid approach delivers the same value you will find whether uh, the rigors of a traditional project management or uh, the agile, uh, the agile approach that comes with the uh, the speed uh, and the you know the the fast um, the fast um, uh, road to the market. Okay, with your products. All right. So um, that's what I can say on this and you know at this particular moment but we will get to all those details later. All right, someone said, I want to understand the uh, project management life cycle. Yes, uh, these are one of the key concepts in project management uh, that you must uh, need to know to be uh, to be considered that you actually understand project management. All right, some people said, we want to be able to manage projects more efficiently. Definitely, we will teach you that, how that works um, and is really about um, a lot of engagement and how you manage your stakeholders and how you manage the different phases of your project, all right? Uh, someone also, some people also say how to navigate project management job applications. Okay, so one of the things we also provide here is that we do what we call LinkedIn, op LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn optimization and also help you to your re resume preparation and uh, interviews, uh, preps, we also provide those services. And even we also assign uh, mentors to our participants that register with us so that we can actually help them in that journey until they actually land a job. And if that they have gotten the job, we still provide mentoring services for them to continue to succeed in what they do. All right, last of them is how to apply project management knowledge in the field. Absolutely. I think this last one ties up everything. Everything you learn here is really what we're trying to do is how do I apply what I have been taught or what I have done in my certifications? How do I actually apply it in the field? And that's exactly what we want to deliver to you here today. I've rambled a lot around all this, one, but it's really important so that we're all on the same page and understand what we're, you know, you know, uh, you know, understand each other's expectation. Okay, so before I start going into my presentation, you know, in the, the other stuff in terms of what we really want to talk about this evening, let me introduce you to our Polar Academy cohort program, all right? Now, this is a program that runs between uh, uh, seven to eight weeks. And what we try to do is to do an introduction to project management in detail. And uh, then go into the co project management concepts uh, by the week two, and then talk about the principles. Now, after we lay the foundation, this is like laying the foundation. After that, well, then we take a case study of, you know, like a real uh, project. Then they take a case study where we identify stakeholders, identify what the need is. We do the requirements gathering. We do uh, scope of work. We actually create a project schedule. We actually uh, identify risks and issues and create uh risk is you know uh, uh issues that need to be resolved and we actually uh also try to uh, look at risks that have become realized how to mitigate them so that's what we do with this case study and this case study runs across the entire project management life cycle which runs for about four weeks uh you know yeah for about three to four weeks uh before we get that completed and then by the final week we recap and do an evaluation to see where everybody is in terms of what they've learned so this is basically the outline of our um 
of our uh, pro, uh, you know program here at Poland when it comes to project management. Now, I also want to let you know that there are several other programs that are, as we speak right now, there are other things, uh, tracks that are going on around business analysis, um, then the project management that you're here in right now. There's another one on organizational change management that is going on right now as we speak. And we have something special for you. So if you would invite people, uh, like, uh, you know, go online, go to LinkedIn or uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and you like our posts, share posts, likes, you know, anybody that has the highest likes will get a full scholarship to join the PM Corp cohort. Now, I'm not going to tell you that you're going to see the value of this later on as we get into the presentation, but uh, it, it is a big deal. So all you got to do is invite out, tell everybody what you're getting from this, you know, share, post, lies, and you're up for the scholarship. All right. So thank you on that. So today, our agenda, let's get into our agenda. All right. So today we're going to be looking at, uh, you know, introduction to project management, starting off with a few questions just to help us to, to lay that foundation. And then we're going to move into project management principles and concepts. Now, the reason why this is tailored this way is to address those expectations that we looked at earlier on in, in the previous uh, a few, in a few slides there earlier on. All right. And then in day two, that is tomorrow about the same time. Excuse me. We're going to also going to look at the project management life cycle. OK, and what exactly happens and why do we have to why do you have that approach to running a project? Why, well, what's the relationship between the principles and concepts? So you're going to see all of that. And then as a bonus, because of the request that we got in terms of what, what people's expectations are, uh, we're going to be looking at maybe one or two project management tools. And I'm also going to share some templates with you and show you some of these templates. Now, if you attend any of our cohorts or you register for any of our cohorts, we're actually going to where you do hands on and we give group assignments. You actually have people uh, working with you and uh, we actually have those reviews and uh, you can make all the mistakes you want to make. But that's a, the learning process to help you to get to that point where you can actually get into the job and you're very competent. And you can actually speak for yourself in terms of what you know and, um, you know, speak the language and, and do the job right without uh, all the nervousness that comes with it uh, of doing something for the first time because in our cohort it's really open and we want a lot of people to make their mistakes all right uh, we're not there to berate anybody uh, but it's just for an environment for learning and growth all right so thank you very much on this any question before i move on i know i've been rambling for a long time okay so if you have any question if you don't want to talk about it now you can just drop it in the chat i'll respond to it uh, later on all right all right so let's get a little quick knowledge check what is a project if you think you know what the response is just put it in the chat there and um i'll, I'll still go ahead and explain what it is um uh, the the truth of the matter is that a lot of us we we do projects without realizing it's a project for example when you plan your wedding or you're planning the, your wedding planner, right? It's a project. Why, why is it a project? Because it has goals, there's objectives, and also uh, uh, limits uh, or limitations that you have to work within or what you call constraints, okay? Now, um, there's a difference between day-to-day -day, uh, job, you know, job, uh, you know, work that you do. Okay, there's a difference. For example, I need to fill my time report every day. That's a routine thing. It's not a project. Or I need to have a meeting, right? That is routine. Or we need to know how the business is doing. Those are routine of ongoing operation. You do that from time to time. So those are not projects. But the projects are like certain endeavors that are designed to lead to a specific outcome that will help the organization. A project is not, it's not, um, what do you call it? it? It's not an end it, itself. It's a means to an end for an organization. So an organization, sometimes they say, we want to do something that will help the business, the organization to become more efficient, 
to grow or to transform the way we do. And so they said that they identify certain initiatives or endeavors and say, we want to do something that because we have set goals we want to achieve, we have objectives and, uh, you know, uh, uh, certain things that we want to achieve. All right. And so that's what I say. They are typically executed to achieve uh, a predetermined outcome. So I gave you an example, a wedding a birthday party, even, um, you, you might even go as well, as far as um, cooking a meal for your in-laws, for example. I mean, your in-laws don't come every day, right? So let's say they decide to visit you on the Christmas, right? You only cook, make, cook that dinner, that uh, Christmas party once a year. So that's a project in itself because you want to impress you what's the objective you want to impress your in-laws you would they want you want them to know that you know how to cook that you're a good wife right and um, for the husband who is a stakeholder in that uh, christmas party his own uh, objective is to make sure his in-laws think good of him that he's taking good care of his wife and he has the money he has the resources to tell okay so those are his expectations so you could look at that as a project but i've given you this a, a few examples because a lot of times we're doing these things without realizing that it's actually a project that we're doing but they are projects all right or you want to buy a new car you just don't wake up every day and say i'm buying a new car it's something you sit down and plan and look at the resources you have. Do I have enough money? Do I have to get a loan from the bank? Or even buying a house. That's a project. It's a major project because this is mortgage that you're going to be paying for for <laughs> so, so, some years, right? So you have to like say, okay, what exactly is my goal here? Okay, uh, what do I want? What's my objective? Uh, what are the limitations I need to work within? Okay, I don't have enough money. Oh, maybe I do have enough money. I want to just pay it off right. Okay, where's the location? Why am I choosing? Why am I choosing this location? Or uh, do I intend to grow a large family? You know, you look at all these requirements. Those are requirements you're looking at. Uh, you don't know it yet, but that's exactly what you're doing. And you have a time period that you want to. You probably want to buy the house at a time that uh, prices of homes are, are cheaper, right? You don't just say, oh, I'm going to buy it in January and just wake up and do it. You probably will, will look at when the market best, uh, of, uh, the market offers you a better opportunity in terms of mortgage and interest rates. Okay. That's what it's a project, right? So I'm giving all these examples to demystify that it's not until it's within an organization that a project is a project. A, a project can be within your home. A project could be an individual endeavor that has other uh, stakeholders involved, all right? So let's look at the key characteristics. So number one is that the project is always temporary, all right? Number two, it's unique. Every project, even two people buying cars, two people in two different families, even if they're in the same family, but both of them want to buy a car. The approach they use may be different and the outcomes will be different because they're not buying the same car. They're probably not using this. Even if when they're using the same vendor, the outcome may be different, all right? So that's why every project must be approached with an open mind that something crazy could happen. Uh, requirements could be totally different. Um, but one thing that is specific, common there is that it has specific goals, all right? And has to always operate within the constraints of time. It's time bound. You have a limited budget. You do not have unlimited budget. There's always a limited budget. And you also have limited resources that you have because you cannot plan a wedding and then you run the wedding for the entire year. That's impossible because you don't have unlimited resources. That's why a wedding has a time period. Even where you do the party for seven days, you still have to end it at some point, all right? And you, because you have. Number, uh, the other one is that it is collaborative. A project is not run, ran by one person. You, you can't do everything. You always need someone. It's either you're talking to your vendor who is needs to supply you some materials, or you're talking to a vendor who is supposed to provide you some professional services, or and you also have other um, uh, 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 interested parties. When I say interested, but we're talking about your stakeholders. Anybody who is interested in whatever endeavor you're in engaging is your stakeholders. Sometimes they may be internal or external. Uh, they could be your in-laws. I like using the in-law thing forgive me so I, I hope your experience with your in-laws are good ones but you know i'm just trying to bring it home that's why i'm using these examples okay um uh you even your children could be stakeholders 
like mom you want to buy uh, a white car no mom you should buy a pink car for example oh no it's pink we want that's the requirement and for all you know even though they are kids they could sway that sort of decision same thing applies the way stakeholders influence uh, project decisions and that's why we have to manage them so probably before you go out to buy that car you want to tell the kids please uh, they, you know give them all the reasons in the world why it should not be a pink car why it should be white right because white cars are easier to paint than trying to mix the color to get a pink color it's more expensive yeah so you're trying to provide some justification why they need to tailor down their requirements uh, you know reduce the scope of what they it is they're asking for okay um then another thing is that pro projects are progressively elaborating what does this mean sometimes you start off a pro start off an endeavor you do not have all the information but as you progress certain things become clearer now this is especially true in organizations where they ask the certain things they want to do all the information is not presently available but you need to start a project you start the project but as you move on certain things become clearer you have to update certain documents you have to update certain schedules and so on and so forth and also more importantly uh this uh projects uh involves uncertainty and risk the fact that you do not know everything up front is a risk in itself it, it creates a lot of uncertainty and it, it involves a lot of collaborative meetings, engagement, trying to talk with people to understand what they, they really need and what needs to be done and whether people are actually doing what they're doing. Remember, you said you want to be a project manager. So I'm explaining all this around uh, what a project is, you know, so that you can get your head around it, that there's no uh, mystery or some myth or it's not even rocket science, any, not anything near it at all. Uh, these are stuff you do every day. It's just that uh, you didn't uh, realize, uh, uh, you know, there are certain discipline uh, around it in terms of how it is done. All right. So then, okay, we've talked about what is the project. Now, who is the project manager? That's a question. I know there are all kinds of titles we have out there, project coordinator, project scheduler, uh, project uh, analyst, uh, project manager, senior project manager, uh, director of project and all of that. All right. So, so who is the project manager? What is the project? Let's look at the definition. Now, uh, this is the in individual who is responsible for planning, executing, and overseeing the success of a project. Now, the fact that this individual is responsible means the, the individual becomes accountable. Now, it does not mean that this individual is the one doing all the work. Now, this is one of the key questions that we've seen over and over in the past few years. Um, we have some of our participants that are totally overwhelmed because they, how in the world am I going to be the one planning? And so so they, what they do is that they take the template, they go to their own corner, they want to you know, fill out the document without involvement of other people, stakeholders. Uh, they want it. Then after they get it done, they now go back to the um, sponsor or the project owner or the product owner and try to give, validate whether that is. They want to do the interviews themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not the way this works. That is not what the role of a project manager is. Uh, a project manager is a leader. You lead. You lead. You control. You also participate in the work. That's the summary of it. So you are accountable for the success of the project. So if people are failing, it's on you. So you need to have your people motivate your people um, to, to, to get them aligned in terms of what the objective is. So I get people to be able to do what they know, the best resources to put, you know, to plug into the different roles and make sure they actually. Now, I know it's not in all situations where the project manager is responsible for actually appointing in fact, as a matter of fact, you get into some projects, they already put all the team members. <laughs> they just anoint you as a leader and say, okay, you go figure them out. Now, this is one of the areas where uh, people, uh, you know, I don't want to call it people skill because that uh, really doesn't mean anything. Um, I mean, I know what the, it, it is, but, you know, in the professional cycle, they say it doesn't really say exactly. So this is really about stakeholder engagement, all right? Uh, for you to actually engage with people, uh, communicate effectively, to understand what the constraints are within the resources that are available, and identify the risk, and 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 and, and make the because I make the call as to do I need a resource to be changed or replaced or reassigned to another. That is your call as a project manager. You have the power to make those decisions. A lot of time, what we've seen with project managers is that they do not realize they actually have a lot of power 
to make those decisions. They say, oh, no, 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 this place, they call, yes, they do, but you can actually influence it. Not only are you a leader as a project manager, you're also an influencer. Leaders influence, isn't it? Otherwise, they can't lead anybody. You have to influence people to lead them, right? So while you're responsible, doesn't mean you are the one that do all the work. If, 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 if you, as a leader, you are the one doing all the work and all your followers are just observing, then you are not leading right. Leaders delegate. All right, leader mentors. Leaders, they mentor people to take responsibility. So that's what you, so the fact that, so you can see that this project management role, it's a little bit more demanding. And you need to begin ask yourself this question. Do I have the necessary, uh, you know, capacity? Do I, do I have leadership skills? What should I be looking at? Do I have leadership skills? Do I have, uh, uh, you know, do, do I like mentoring, for example? If you don't like leadership, you don't like mentoring, perhaps this is not the right role for you. So you need to start thinking about it. I'm explaining all of this in this little bit of detail for you to understand. So uh, because the pressure as a project manager can get immense sometimes. But it's also where if you succeed on things, it can lead to many other successes uh, in future. All right. So what are your key responsibilities? Right. You set objectives, you define scope. Now, even though this is being defined the way it is right here, does not mean that you are the one that set the objectives. It's your stakeholders that tell you what they want, your sponsor, your project owner. They're the ones that tell you what it is they want. And you have to like make sure that everybody, including the stakeholders and your team members are aligned towards that objective. You are also the one that will engage the stakeholders, your key stakeholders, the you know, all the stakeholders within the bit to understand what it is that they want and be able to look in terms of, can we do A, B, C, D within this time frame? Perhaps not. Maybe it's only A and B we can do. Then you will help the business to define that scope. It is not for you to tell the business what they need to do. No, 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 no. You're not a consultant. You're a project manager. Okay. But you see your job to identify the risk associated with what it is that they need to do. And this is one of the areas where we talk about domain knowledge. I'm not talking about project management knowledge. I'm talking about domain knowledge, industry knowledge. So let's say, for example, I'm in construction. I need to understand the way the construction industry works, right? I need to understand the way uh, construction organizations are organized and the way all the state laws and county laws and, uh, you know, all the certifications and permits that, they, you know, uh, the time for planning in, uh, for example, in construction, it, sometimes it can run into four months, six months before the actual project even starts. Now, this is unlike if I'm in manufacturing, for example, the time it takes me to plan uh, to plan out, the time it takes for planning, it varies. So from industry to industry, in healthcare, for example, project management, there's so many requirements that are not required in a regular industry like IT, for example, or uh, healthcare, or, or um, I mean, just think of anyone that you know. So every industry, so in, in terms of, Yes, I am a project manager, but where, which industry uh, do I want to stay in? Th these are some of the things you need to start thinking about because the requirements across those industries uh, or even government projects, for example. Uh, some of you may be Prince 2 certified. Prince 2 certified is more tailored towards government projects. Same thing, even PM, uh, PMP, uh, sorry, PMI's own. Uh, PMI's own also is also tailored there. There's a way in terms of the practitioner's guide that helps you how you apply it when it comes to pro government projects. There are requirements that vary. So basically, when you come for this uh, for project management training, is to provide you a framework within which you need to work in so that you make sure that all your I's are dotted in terms of uh, key concepts and, and, uh, and principles you need to bear in mind. That it's not a textbook, oh, this is exactly what you're going to do. Uh, for example, if you look at PMI's practitioner's guide, for example, you'll see that the way they explain a few things, it's not exactly, the, the, the textbook helps you to pass the exam, but not to help you to do the job. You need a practitioner guide to also be able to start applying. That's 
the assumption is that you have done some project management, all right? It's only useful to you unless you have some hands-on experience, all right? The other one also is allocating resources, all right? Allocating resources, I've talked about that a little bit in terms of looking at your team members and real, like everybody's skills suited for the role that we want them to play on this particular project. The other thing is also reporting on the project itself, right? It's your job to engage the senior leadership and give them a progress report in terms of what is going on. It's your duty also to, uh, to have project meetings with your team to track progress before you report to senior leadership to make sure that everybody is doing what they're doing and the quality of work that is being delivered is actually meets the standard all right we talked about that and then communication and you can see i've talked about that as well excuse me as well all right so skill uh, skill sets that you need uh you need a combination of leadership organizational problem solving interpersonal skills these are really key and this goes back to the the uh, you know the people that ask the question how do i stand out that this is what you, this is what it is in a nutshell this is what it is all right um it's why the knowledge is relevant but this is really what it boils down to about leading about uh showing empathy as a leader about listening more than talking that's what leaders do. It's about listening them more, trying to understand before you profit solution. It's about knowing how to pull all the pieces of the project, you know, all the different stakeholders, get them aligned, get them to agree even when they are disagree. Uh, it's about you being the peacemaker when stakeholders are divided, departments are divided on a project and the thing is stalling the project. That's when you shine as a project manager. This because you are the one that needs to look at everything objectively step step away from the problem don't say oh i'm just a project manager it's not my business oh no 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 it is your pro is this your it, it is part of your problem so to get back and look at what and look at the problem objectively and be able to recommend options okay now it's not all the time that the first option you recommended is accepted but you need to be able to provide different option a option b so either way the business will find a common ground and that is where you shine for the person that asked that question all right you are the bridge between the project team and your stakeholders all right and uh, this is where i think if you really want to shine focus on these uh even with in addition to you know learning all those things that we're telling you about running a project okay um so let's Let's quickly look at the key elements in project management. Now, I, I looked at some, what I call, I did a, a, you know, a selection of some key elements, uh, which are really important because you, that's what you deal with every day as a project manager. You're talking about how many managing scope, all right? I've talked a little bit about it as I talked about the role of the project manager. Time management is key, remember? We talked about you have the constraints of time, budget, okay, and, re and resources, right? We talked about that, time management, uh, cost of resource management, okay, uh, quality. Remember, at the beginning of your project, you will say, the client will tell you, this is our set goals, this is what we want to achieve, all right? You need to make sure as a project, so these are key elements that will help you that you need to focus on. Quality management, risk management, communication. All right, stakeholder management. And then something we call the creator. I just threw in this last two uh, because I know someone asked also that it, they needed an explanation on that. Uh, critical, uh, critical path, all right? Uh, your triple constraint. I've talked about triple constraint uh, more than once now uh, while going through this. All right, these are some of the key uh, elements, right, in project management, all right? Now let's talk about the uh, triple constraint. So, so when you're talking about your schedule, for example, or time management, the question is, why are we looking at this triple content? Because either way any of these uh, spheres they move, either direction that they move on this triangle, they impact each other, all right? If I spend more time on doing, for example, if I change my scope, it's going to affect time. It's also going to affect cost. If I'm going to spend more time doing something, it means that people are actually going to be there doing work. Somebody has to pay them. There's a cost implication. If I reduce my cost, for example, that's what we call it. Uh, if I reduce my cost, then perhaps the money that you are making available will not be able to meet that scope, right? 
and we probably will not be able to, and because the scope uh, has been reused, the time may change. It may reduce or increase, depending on what we're doing. And at the heart of all this, we're trying to juggle these three spheres to ensure that we meet quality, which is why the quality is in the center, right? So that's what the triple constraint is about. That's what you, the much of your job is really juggling these three balls and make sure it's balanced and at the same time keeping your eyes on the quality of work. The fact that budget reduced doesn't mean that quality should reduce. The fact that scope reduced and time reduced doesn't mean that the quality, the quality must remain in the center. It must remain the same. That's what this uh, the triple concern is. And, and I put those other questions around it to for better clarity, clarity, okay? So that's what you do. That's what the triple constraint, or sometimes they call it the iron triangle around project, because that's where the project manager leaves. It, at the back of his mind, this is what he's thinking about. Am I, is my schedule, uh, or are, are we on schedule? Uh, how much are we burning in terms of money? Are we spending more than we budgeted? Or is our budget on track? Uh, in terms of scope, are we, for every stage of this particular project, or milestone, or deliverable, you know, are we, checking off and making sure these are all the requirements that the client told us at the very, very beginning. So now why you may not go to the board and write it down, but in your mind as a PM, that's exactly what you're doing. You, 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 you're trying to manage all of these elements to make sure that, um, that they all uh, align, all right? Now, someone also talked about uh, the critical path. Now, um, another name I have for critical path, uh, I call it the dependency path, and I will explain to you why. Now, if you look at the diagram on your screen, we have like uh, about 11 activities. Uh, let me just call them activities, all right? Now, if you follow one, uh, so we started off at, 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 at number one, and it goes to number two. Now, if you take a look at number three, if you can see that a number two there. That number two is looking at number two as a dependency for number three. That means number three cannot start until number two is done. Or then number three must start immediately after number two is done. There cannot be any delay, all right? Same thing also, if you look at, uh, if you move to six, you can see it says three, is a dependency for six. That means immediately three is finishing, six must start. It's back to back. Oh, that's another word you can use to it. Any set of activities or tasks that you've planned that are back to back and they're connected to each other. That And that is, uh, and when you have those kind of dependencies, right? Uh, we have those, that is when you put all of those numbers and add all the durations for each of those activities, that is the longest part on your project and if you move either reduce the day the days or the hours that it will take to complete any of them it will affect the time it will take to start and finish the entire project that's why they call it the critical path because everything you do there in terms of changing the time or in, 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 in changing the time in terms of either increasing it or the reducing it will impact the overall duration of the project that's why i call the critic, you could also call it the dependency part because it's always about certain dependencies. Now, all this diagram may not make a lot of sense unless you have a project management tool where you can actually demonstrate it. And in our cohort, we all, we do that. We actually use a tool. We actually make a choice of the tool. Like in the last one we did, I use Smashing, okay? Because I'm very conversant with my, I also use Microsoft project as well. But we, we use Smashing, we actually created those per critical part and they were able to see it. All right. So, but this is the idea. All right. You can, so it's the critical path or the dependency path. You know, if somebody asks you, yeah, this is a, it's the longest path that has uh, dependencies against each other on, on that particular project. All right. Uh, the other thing also is the project life cycle. What is the project life cycle all about? Um, just, um, I'm just trying to take a look at my time. Um, all right. So, uh, the project life cycle. What is the project life cycle about? It's really about the different phases in a project. Okay, that's what it's looking at. in terms of the the different um, um, the different phases that will help us to actually uh, plan and execute and deliver the project. All right. 
And it usually starts with the initiation phase. According to Project Management Institute, it starts with the initiation phase, followed by the planning phase, followed by uh, execu executing what you've planned. And then, of course, you're monitoring and controlling. And then, of course, you close the project. All right. So th this is a sequence that we put some kind of order in terms of the endeavor. OK. Remember what I said at the beginning, the, the project management practice is a discipline. It's a framework to help to guide you so that you can take a piece of work and actually organize it in the way it can be efficiently done. That's what this whole project uh, life cycle is about. A framework that will tell you, okay, hey, you have an idea, you have an endeavor. Okay, this is how you do first. This is what you need to do first. Okay, initiation phase. You need to tell me why you don't want to do this. Provide me a justification why you want to do this. Number two, because projects cost money. They involve resources. There are a lot of risk involved. It can actually bring down a company. It can make people lose their jobs. I need to have an authority that I allow the project manager to actually do the work, which is the project charter. All right? That's what gives the project manager authority to actually... Remember earlier on, I was talking about the project manager. I said, yes, you have authority to make changes. This particular document is what gives you that authority. In fact, as an act of, of fact, if somebody, if they, let's say you're a private consultant and you come in as a project manager and you have the project charter that authorizes you to do the job and some, somebody for some reason uh, did, uh, decides that they will remove you without any justification and your contract did not, uh, what do you call it, did not negate the project charter. You can actually file claims against the company because that's how much authority the project charter has. It's what gives the project manager authority to request resources to make changes on that particular project based on the uh, risk uh, that the person is looking that the project manager is looking at. Uh, because it, remember, you are responsible and accountable for this project. If it goes down, they're coming for you. That's the way, that's the reality of this, all right? Um, I, this is not to scare you, but it shows you how much weight the role of a project manager is. You have a lot of weight. You need to manage risk to outcome. Write that uh, phrase down. You'll probably meet it sometime uh, down the line, all right? So when you have established the basis for the project, the next thing you need to do is to plan how to work. You need to look at in terms of your scope, Okay, we understand why we want to do this, but what is the scope of what we need to do? Can we do it with it? But the only way we can know the scope of what we need to do is to do what we call a work breakdown structure. We need to, okay, let's say we want to buy the car. You know, I used the buying car example earlier on. So what and what do I need to do in order to get this car? It's not just to say, okay, I need money. That's too high level. Ask yourself the question, where would the money come from? Even if I identify the sources the money will come from, how much is coming from each of those sources? You see what I'm doing? I'm beginning to break down how I'm going to buy there. That's the same thing as doing the work breakdown structure. So let's say we want to construct a table. Where are we going to get the veneer? Where are we going to get the wood? Where are we going to, which sawmill are we going to use? Which carpenter are we going to hire? How many long is it going to take them to do that? Do we need a, 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 a wallpaper on it? Do we need a, 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 um, you know, a table stud on it? Do we need a glass top? Do we need a side chair? Do we need... It's until you sit down during your planning and look into the detail and break it down to that level. The truth of the matter is that you will miss something. If you go ahead and just, hey, plan it anyway, what is going to happen? What is going to happen is that you're going to run into a, a lot of problems uh, on that particular project because you did not spend the time in planning to look into the details of what needed to be done. Now, after you've done the work down base structure, the next thing you need to do is to create the schedule. Now you have all the information you need in terms of all that needs to be done. And then you create the schedule, you start assigning people. Okay, these are the resources I have. I think this person is more skilled for this, all right? Uh, you assign them and then you validate that with your uh, stakeholders, all right? And then after you've done that planning, it's time to execute what we plan. That's what you do in execution. And 
that's where you talk about you start reporting on your project status and tracking your deliverables all right i you personally i do not con control is usually more like an invisible invisible when i say invisible is that um in from the moment the project chatter becomes live and approved you have actually started working on the project and you start communicating you start looking at budget because you as the project you're already burning time there's also a risk you're already looking at and you start reporting so even though pmi say oh yeah yes yeah, the phase four is for you to take note of this particular uh, concept and make sure you apply it across the entire project life cycle all right that's why you talk about your stakeholder management remember those key elements i mentioned earlier you can see it showing up again right uh that's what it happens now uh, somebody talked about oh agile what happened now the difference is like if you look at the diagram you see that between two and three i talk about the agile iteration method so in agile instead instead of just saying oh give me a business case we'll probably have uh for scrum for example we have what we call the product catalog okay and then from the product catalog we will have a sprint what exactly that's what you're trying to do in terms of scope when you pick items from your product catalog and you put it into the sprint you're saying this is the scope of what we have agreed to do now and as we're working on it we're going back to like going back into planning going back to the stakeholder or the product owner and we'll say, hey, is this what we're doing? Is it okay? And then we go back, execute, come back again, you know, reset again until we get the final product out. So that is the between two and three is where Agile really lives immediately uh, because what in Agile we did, we don't, in Scrum, for example, we do not spend all that time we spend in initiation trying to write all these documents. Planning, immediately we initiating something, we, it's in planning, we're doing it, and we're moving into execution. That's for the benefit of the speed. But sometimes Agile can become very expensive when people are not disciplined about work planning. They're not disciplined about getting into the details of what needs to be done to provide clarity. Then you're going to have several iterations and something that probably would... Uh, take uh, three months sometimes it may take longer because you have more several more sprints of uh, two two to four weeks that need to occur over time until we get the final product and sometimes in this scrum environment there's nothing wrong with scrum which is why i would say i prefer hybrid situation where the rigor and the discipline of planning and everybody understand what you know like you basically up to people to gain that experience and have the discipline of saying writing down and say hey this is what i did so that tomorrow if they, even if they are not there somebody can always go back to that document and say okay this is what was done and not just sacrifice discipline in the name of speed okay that's my take i have nothing against agile i love agile i love scrum but i'm just saying that if you're in a, an organization where they are not yet matured for agile it may actually hurt you then help you all right uh okay so and of course and then you uh you have the project closure where you talk about your lessons learned and then you of course you close the project so this is basically the uh the uh the framework or the project for the project life cycle all right uh very quick one i'll talk about project management principles and concepts um very quickly let me do a quick knowledge check what is a principle what when i say project pr principle or project management principle what do you do you think it is all right so so a principle is a fundamental or guiding rule or that or you know that or the lines or governs the system. Okay. It basically is something that, you know, I'm I'm sure you have had the phrase, oh, he's a very principled person. What, what does that mean? It means this individual has an underlying rule that guides their decisions. I hope we got that. In project management, as a project manager, you need to have underlying guiding rules. And PMI has gracefully provided us those guiding principles that every time we're doing something uh, around project management, these guiding rules should guide how we make decisions regarding projects. Okay? Uh, for example, uh, an example is the golden rule. You know what the golden rule is? That's a principle. The principle of you have to treat each other. So every time you're interacting with people, you are treating, at the back of your mind, you're treating them exactly the way you want them to be. So that's your, the golden rule is your principle. 
in, on project management, for example, now, now I've used circular and I'm using the project management space. The principle of stakeholder engagement, remember I mentioned it, the element are one of the key elements, right? This emphasizes the importance of involving and in community. Stakeholder management is key to your success as a project manager, all right? There's so many other examples, I mean, this other example in law and the principles of, uh, the principle of presumption of innocence. This is a principle in law practice that you cannot find somebody guilty unless they have been tried in a court of law, right? Unless they have tried in a court of law. So let's take a look, a, a look at some of these principles. You can, um, I thought this is recorded. I, I, I don't know if you'll probably be able to have access to it, but look at it here. Leadership, all right? Scope management, measurement and evaluation. These are principles. You must have all of this at the back of your mind when you are running a project. Change management, team collaboration, continuous. It's always at the back of your mind. And this you should plan how, guide how you plan, execute, and pro, uh, complete your projects, all right? All right, let's recap for principle on principles. So, right uh, now, we know what a project is. We know also what a project manager is, and it's not. Now we also know how to what managing a project means. Um, we also know the key skills that will help you to succeed as a project manager. Uh, we have looked at the project, the five um, phases in the project uh, management life cycle, and we looked at a critical constraint. Also true in uh, also true in the critical path for you. Uh, we, I've looked at the key elements of project management. So the next thing we want to look at really quickly is concepts. So you can see that I've talked about concept now, I, I've covered principles, now we're not talking about concept. What is it talking about? So now, again, this is a mental construct that helps you to understand and organize the world around you, okay? By grouping similar or related objects and idea into uh, a coherent um, idea, okay? Uh, let's take a look at the example. When we use the word animal, all right, we know that it's anything that is other than us, <laughs> that the two of us, okay? <laughs> anything that is anything that is other than the two of us, okay? That's what the idea, every time we use the word animal. So also in project management, when we say, immediately you hear the word scope, this again refers, immediately you know, oh, okay, the boundaries are of, of the objective in terms of what needs to be done, right? Or we use things like we say color. You already know. It doesn't matter what the color is, but immediately they say color, it means the entire spectrum of possibilities when it comes to color. That's what exactly it is about concept. Let's take a look at some of them. Work breakdown structure, for example. Immediately we say that, you know, it's about decomposing whatever initiative that we need to work on. Or we say project. Exactly, you know, this is a temporary endeavor, for example. Or we say project management. Oh, this is the application of the uh, of the knowledge of uh, or the discipline of, of managing a project using tools and skill set. Uh, again, you see scope is also coming up there again. Project schedule. Aha, look at critical path. We talked about it. Okay. So these are some of the concepts. Agile project management uh, or project deliverable. When you hear those things, so these are some, of, I would call them again, the principles and, uh, and concepts you find they should form your vocabulary when you have conversations for example you're going in an interview or end of value management for example when you're interviewing these are the what you need to be speaking in our cohort we try to teach you how we're you know like in the in the in the in the, in the practicum we actually show you how to apply these principles and concepts so that when you get into some of these conversations with recruiters you're actually talking very confidently that someone uh, our, our cohort is designed to build that confidence into you, uh, you know, uh, to be able to uh, tackle those interviews and, and get the job. All right. All right. Key takeaways uh, here is uh, we now know principles are guiding rules that govern actions or decisions. We know that principles because I'm a principal person, so you know what exactly the concept. It's just a construct, a mental construct that help us understand the world around us. Okay. Okay. In terms of the way we categorize uh you know uh, information project management principles think of stakeholder engagement quality management etc all right project managing concepts think of critical path scope script and so on and so forth um now you have we have a better understanding of, of the project management concept and uh, now uh, you know after we've gone all this thing maybe the reason why you're here is because you want to have more time for your family uh, you want to be able to probably maybe 
your inner desire is that I want to be able to get a job that will allow me. There are a lot of job that project management uh, jobs that are done remotely. I mean, I see hundreds of them all the time on LinkedIn. Hundred percent project manager role. Hundred uh, percent, or or you just simply want a fulfilling job, or you want to stop all this, you know, get a well-paying job so you can stop all your side hustles, or you want to be able to uh, move into this role so you earn more money and buy your own house. You know, there are many things that may be driving all of this, but one thing I can tell you is that you shouldn't be tired, all right? You shouldn't be tired. We are 100% committed to you. Um, we can help you, all right? Or perhaps you're feeling frustrated. We've been there too. When I first moved to this country, one of the frustrations, even with all my experience, was the fact that people can tell you, oh, you're overqualified. Oh, you go qualify. Oh, no, no, you didn't go to an American school. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, which school did you graduate from, by the way? You know, oh, no, no, no. Oh, this name sounds so strange. And now this, that, you know, all that kind of frustration. I've done a certification tra training with uh, on, uh, on a Google uh, related path. It, it took, still took me several months. If I, almost another year before I, I could even have somebody, uh, I mean, it's not that I, don't, I didn't, I wasn't getting interviewed. So I've been there. So I know how frustrating it can be, all right? Trying to leave, um, uh, you know, from hand to mouth, uh, side. You would think that with all my experience that, oh, immediately you come into America, you will get all the best. That's not true. Or you come into Canada, everything's just gonna be rosy. That's not true. Or maybe UK, anybody telling you that, that's a lie. Uh, that's not truthful. Okay, uh, unless you have a sponsorship that you already have the job and you just arrived. Everybody will have a story. That's what I want to tell you. So we have been there. I have been there. Um, so you're not alone. Uh, or maybe you're feeling confused with all that Jonathan has said today. He has even left me more confused. I don't even know what it's here. We're here to provide you some career guidance, okay? Um, even if you're not attending the cohort training, but you just want somebody to provide some guidance in time, we're here to help you, and you can reach out to Oge or myself uh, or to Ada uh, Hill uh, Peace, um, who is with us here uh, as the PMO, uh, and we'll be able to work something out for you, okay? Um, or perhaps you're skeptical because you've attended some other training, and they say, oh, you're going to add the uh, six. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe this one is just like that. I assure you, what we are doing, the, the we have looked at everything that has been happening around, around the Canadian space, around the u.s space and we find out that a lot of the training are designed they just basically kind of increase your knowledge but doesn't help you to get you know do the job because there are some realities that are not in textbook you won't find them in that. and that's what we share with you here so i assure you that if you follow through and do the hard work and do the assignment and participate and do all the interview and linkedin optimization and everything you will get a job by the special grace of God, all right? And if you already have a job, um, you can keep that job. Or perhaps you're even thinking now, oh, I can't afford this right now. Oh, I don't have the time. Uh, or who we, can I do this with all my crazy schedule? Uh, I'm doing like two jobs, how am I gonna do this? Well, the truth of the matter, even if you register, all our classes are recorded. So you can always come back from work. Uh, and the way we design it is that each of the training uh, sessions doesn't take that so long, okay? But it's reaching content and their assignment because it's based on a case study. And it's something you can actually follow at your own pace and still complete it. And remember, we have the mentorship along with it. We also have the resume of the, uh, the resume preparation with it, interview prep, and mentorship, and LinkedIn optimization. Uh, you know, all um, uh, offered uh, by Polo Academy, all right? Uh, one thing you need to know is that there, nothing good comes easy. Anybody that tells you that success, that's a quick path to success, it's not being truthful to you, all right? All the great successes you've heard require a lot of time commitment, a lot of sacrifice, sometimes sleepless nights, uh, but you know where you're going. You just need to keep your eyes focused on the goal, and that's the way to succeed, all right? Unfortunately, we can't do that work for you, but we have offer you to walk alongside you to get to that goal, all right? So as you know, we are not only doing uh, the uh, business, uh, the uh, project management, 
We also provide doing the business analysis is also happening uh, right now. The organizational change management is also happening this week as well. Uh, and the project management is the one that you're on right now. All right. So I'm going to just, like I said, um, for our cohort, our cohort about 1600 Canadian dollars, but can be paid uh, instrumentally. All right. One time payment is just the actual payment. And then you have three installments of 675 that you could uh, pay over, uh, you know, three times. Or if you want to pay four installments, you also have that opportunity. I really encourage you. Uh, we have a lot of success stories, not only uh, from our business analysis, we organization change management, even project management um, uh, as well. So I really encourage you to uh, take advantage of this. I know you probably may have done other drift. This is totally drifting. What we do here, as you can see tonight, with all the uh, stories I've shared with us, uh, our approach is totally different. All right. And also we have for any alumni, any of the trainings that you uh, uh, want to attend of the three that I mentioned, for alumni, you'll get a, like a 50% discount right um and I, again like i said if you post and like do likes uh, for our programs uh, these ones that we're running right now you could get as much uh, uh the full scholarship to attend the project management uh, uh class all right <clears throat> this offer is valid until 6 p.m eastern time wednesday january 17 17 2014 so i want to encourage you to take advantage of this um and if you're in doubt Talk to our alumni, uh, they'll probably tell you um, what they got out of this, all right? Just know that we're 100% committed to helping you to crush this, help you get that job and keep it, all right? So that's the end for day one here. I know we spent a little bit more time, I apologize for that, but it's just that you can see that we, I had so much I really wanted to give us, but we're constrained in terms of time. Uh, so today we just looked at introduction, introduction to project management, we also looked at project management principles and concepts. Tomorrow, we're going to dive deeper into the project management life cycle. So I just went or uh, you know just across it, but tomorrow I'm going to show you templates. I'm going to show you uh, the you know the, what what those documents look like and how those documents are prepared. I, I may not be preparing it there, but I will show you and explain all the key uh, data that you actually put into and why those data are important, all right? And then for those of you who said, oh, we, can you show us uh, some manage, project management too? Well, I'm probably going to use Smartsheet again, unfortunately. Uh, if you prefer Microsoft Project, we can always arrange something else uh, during the cohort if you do register for it. And uh, so that's what we're going to do tomorrow at uh, the same time. Uh, hopefully tomorrow uh, we'll be able to, uh, you know, uh, finish up a little more uh, earlier. So I'm hoping that um, you have enjoyed today's session. I want you to just drop a note in terms of what you learned today. Tell us what you learned uh, today or what you picked up from today. Uh, help us to send out the message out there. Remember, there's a scholarship up that is up for grabs. Just the person that has more likes, right? The person that has more likes, uh, you know, has more likes, gets a full scholarship to attend our project management cohort. All right. Um, so take advantage of your three learning tracks that we have. Okay. Uh, take advantage of it. Uh, business analysis, project management, organizational change management, all happening uh, these uh, next five days starting today. All right. So um, thank you, uh, everybody. And um, Ada, do you have any announcement for our participants today? Announcement. Yes, we'll see them tomorrow. Huh? Hi, Yami. Yes, we can hear you now. Hey, no announcement tonight. We'll all right so uh guys please go on uh you can register as early as tonight and um send out a message out there and just just uh go come on and um have an experience of a lifetime because we're here to make sure you get that job um i i, I you get that job and keep it and if you already have the job we want to help you get the job done that's what we do here in Poland academy we're not here to do some academic exercise we actually break it down uh, demystify the whole thing provide you templates guidance and mentorship to get the job 
keep the job and shine and uh, you know and fly the flag for everybody so thank you guys everybody uh let's have your feedback drop comments go to linkedin uh, facebook um and uh what do you call it instagram like uh our um, posts and stuff like that person with the highest one gets a full scholarship to attend the program thank you guys enjoy the rest of your evening thank you